Hi guys, my name's Julia, welcome to Book Time. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I've kind of stolen the idea from my friend Charlie Brook, whose channel I'll link below, and in particular this video. And she called it Read One, or Read One, Want More. So she's read one of an author's collection and liked it so much that she wants to read more but hasn't got around to it yet. And I thought it was a really fun idea because there are so many books I've read um, which are just, you know, one of an author's broader collection. And for many years I've been meaning to read more and just haven't got around to it. So I thought this would be a good way of going through my books, working out um, who I really want to read more of and motivating me to do it. So I'm going to go through in no particular order. The first one is um, Manuel Puig, who is an Argentine author. I read this in high school. This is Kiss of the Spider Woman. Now this is translated from the Spanish by Thomas Thomas Colchi and this was published in 1976 but um, sadly Manuel Pig has passed away. I adored this book. Now keep in mind I haven't read it for 16 or 17 years so my memories might be coloured of my teenage experience of reading this book but I thought it was fantastic. It's about two men um, who were in jail and um, I, I look it's a bit hard to see it's just a dialogue between them so it's just like talking points <clears throat> I thought it was great it was really well written really evocative made me think about a lot of things um, and he's written a number of other novels um, Betrayed by Rita Hayworth, Heartbreak Tango, The Buenos Aires Affair and eternal curse on the reader of these pages so i haven't read any of those so i'm going to try and track them down if it, if you guys have read any of them please let me know because i just remember adoring this so i, sh I should probably reread these too um, so hopefully i'll get around to that soon the next author is louise erdrick so she's an american writer she um, it says here she grew up in north dakota and is mixed blood enrolled in the turtle mountain band of the ojibwe people um, at the time I read this, she'd written seven novels, but she's written many more since then. I read this in university, maybe in third year or something, and absolutely adored it. The last report on the miracles at Little No Horse. Um, it was set on a reservation and was just kind of about, uh, followed a few characters on this reservation, including um, a priest, there's a lot of stuff in here about family, about culture, um, about sexuality, about how we perceive um, other people. Yeah, based on a whole lot of factors. I thought it was excellent. Again, I read it, I don't know, 15 years ago or something, 13 years ago. So my views could be, you know, rose tinted, but I thought it was excellent. You can see all the tabs I made. Um, and I've got a couple of her other books. I actually, oh, I don't have them here, but I've got La Rose, which was released pretty recently, I think. And I've got The Bingo Palace. Um, and there are heaps of other ones. So I'll probably read the ones I've got and then hope to get um, the others from the library or something. Um, because I, I just remember thinking it was so vivid and the characterization was so good and it was so rich, even though it followed so many characters. Um, you know, sometimes books have so many characters and then the richness kind of can either drop off because it's too hard for the author to hold all these threads in tandem. Um, well, hers was, I just remember it being the opposite, like such a full version. Like I still think of this book as one of my favourite books, even though I haven't read it for many, many years. So hopefully I'll be able to get to some more of her books soon. The next one, actually, <laughs> this Margot Lanigan's Sea Heart. So Margot Lanigan's an Australian writer. This is actually probably my favourite book of all time. Um, it's based on the Selkie myths and it's a really biting commentary. It's sort of a very biting feminist commentary. It's quite upsetting, um, but there's also moments of great hope in it and beauty and her writing style is just excellent. Told in a really interesting way, so from multiple perspectives. Um, I absolutely adored it, but <laughs> despite it being my favourite book, I haven't read any of her other stuff. So I've got one of her short story collections. I can't remember it's, what it's called. I'll put an image up on the screen. And I did start reading it, but the first story was so intense that I had to put it down. I was like, I can't do this 
right now I need to come back when I'm in a better frame of mind. Like it was really good. It was just really quite harrowing. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get back to that soon. And then Tender Morsels is the other one, which is really well known. Um, and then she's got a bunch of other novels and short story collections as well. So yeah, hopefully I'll get around to them too. And she's Aussie, so be good to support more of her work. The next one is a Scottish writer, James Yorkston. He's actually a folk singer and songwriter. That's, if you've heard of him, that's probably how you would know him. And this was a novel he published a few years ago. It came out through Freight, who I don't even think exists anymore. I could be wrong. But um, I just picked this up in Oban a few years ago in a bookstore because it was on a table full of local like Scottish writers and I thought it sounded pretty cool and I really loved it. It's kind of just about this young Scottish guy going back to his home in the country and reconnecting with an old friend and like trying to work out trying to work out how he fits in with his old community and um his old friends and his family and like what it means to go back there and have left this city life um and then he and this pal sort of you know get up to some mischief i suppose and you know what it's not even the like technically it's not the best written story like some stuff happens towards the end that kind of came out of nowhere and didn't feel that relevant and the pacing is a bit slow in the middle but I adored the voice and the tone and the way it evoked Scotland and longing and friendship it was just so good it was really funny like this sort of real dry black humor so even though it wasn't the perfect novel I it I really warmed to it and adored it and he has got a new book coming out I don't know what it's called. Um, I don't know if it's coming out soon. I just know that he's been contracted to publish it. So when it comes out, I will be one of the first to order it in from overseas because I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. <clears throat> the next one is another Aussie one, Jane Rawson's From the Wreck, which I just read and five stars. It was absolutely amazing. I'd heard a lot of other um, booktubers talk about it, particularly Simon. I know he really adored it and it was actually through him that I was inspired to read it because I had a copy of it but I thought it was just kind of a historical novel I, I like historical fiction but I just was like oh yeah I'll get around to it at some point but I read it and it was so amazing it is not it isn't it is a historical novel but it also has an alien from outer space in it but in a way that seems to make perfect sense and is so believable and beautiful and sad and it's all about like wanting to connect and being lonely and you know how do you make connections how do you deal with trauma all this stuff was awesome so she's got two other books um one is called formaldehyde which is a novella which won uh the seizure prize a few years ago so the seizure prize is a prize for a novella in australia so i want to really want to read that and i think the other one's called wrong turn at the office of unmade lists i'll put a picture up so that came out a few years ago that's older than From the Wreck, but I really want to get my hands on them and read them because I thought From the Wreck was absolutely fantastic. What else have I got here? Oh, um, Ernest J. Gaines, A Gathering of Old Men. So this, this is an American novel. It came out in, I should, all, I should really check before I start talking, 1983. So Ernest J. Gaines is from Louisiana and I, Bought this when I was in New Orleans a few years ago because I wanted to pick up some local writers. And this was such a, like I knew nothing about it. I didn't even know about the author. He's quite prolific actually. Um, he's from, yeah, he's from Louisiana and this is set on a plantation in the 1970s. And it's about a Cajun man, so a white man who gets murdered. And um, by, we think it's by a black man. I, um, and so the whole story is kind of working through everyone's perspectives to find out who did it. But obviously it highlights a whole lot of the racial tension, stereotypes, prejudices, um, and, you know, it highlights the way that the um, black workers have to behave in order to get, like, 
how do they get to tell their truth in a society that doesn't believe their truth or put value on their voices it was really really cool and also like was a page turner like I had I didn't know what the reveal was going to be till the very end so I found it was really great and it's told from a whole heap of different perspectives like women children men workers friends like the white farm owner um his sister or his wife or something it was just it was really good I really enjoyed it so I would love to read more of his work he's written a bunch of books including Catherine Carnier of Love and Dust, Bloodline, The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, A Long Day in November, In My Father's House. So, and potentially more since then, because this came out so long ago. But if you have read any of his stuff, please let me know, because I thought, yeah, I thought it was really great. Last couple, um, I don't have the hard copies. Juno Diaz is the first one. So a friend gifted me, um, this is how you lose her a few years ago and I thought it was absolutely brilliant and since then I have picked up um, his short story collection Drown which may have even been his first release I don't know if that's true though so don't take my word for it and I also picked up um, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. so I really hope to get to them I just thought his writing style was so incredible it was so rich and vibrant and colourful um, and funny but it was also, you know, so revealing about um, race and class and migration in America, all sorts of things. It was just so great. So I cannot wait to get to his other stuff because I remember thinking with This Is How You Lose Her, this is probably going to be one of my favourite books of all time. I thought it was that good. The other author, it's another American author, well, a Russian-American author, actually, Gary Steingart. And I read his novel, Super Sad, True Love Story. I don't know. I probably read it between five and ten years ago. Thought it was excellent. It was a dystopian fiction set in New York City between a Russian-American and he, his Korean-American girlfriend. Um, and it's really concerned with, like, materialism and consumerism and technology is just sort of like taken to the nth degree but economically America is totally collapsing um, and their relationship sort of functions as partly a metaphor for that or, or like how do you connect in this world that's so like you know like subsumed by other stuff he, again his writing style was really great it was really funny and the world building was really cool like the way he envisioned this future kind of near future sort of New York City was really great. So I can't wait to read some of his other stuff. Both Gary Steingart and Juno Diaz had a lot of cool stuff about like what does it mean to be an American when you're, you know, also from somewhere else. Um, and that was really fascinating for me as well. So the other stuff by Gary Steingart is Lake Success. So that's recent. I think that came out last year. Um, Absurdistan and the Russian Debutante's Handbook. So they're all these novels, but he's also written Little Failure, which was a memoir. And I saw him in person at a, like a festival or something a few years ago, and he was so funny and insightful. So I'm really excited to see, well, not to see, to read more of his books. So that's all I've got here. It is by no means an exhaustive list. It's just I looked, had a quick look through my bookshelf and was like, yeah, these are the books I really do want to read more from these authors. So yeah, let me know if you've got authors like that too, or if you've read stuff by any of, read other things by any of the writers I talked about. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye.